What is up guys, Taylor Moore here. So if you just got the DJI Mavic, you're thinking about getting the DJI Mavic, you're probably doing exactly what I did when I was at that stage, which is scouring the internet, looking at every YouTube video humanly possible to try to learn as much as I possibly can. Well, today I'm gonna give you all the tips and tricks that I found over the course of the last three months. Let's get going, but first, intro and coffee. I gotta say, the Nespresso is not necessarily the same thing as pour over. They're also not a sponsor, but man, they make a really good cup of joe. Oh, that's good coffee. All right, guys, so let's just jump right in. I wanna give you 10 tips across all the different categories to give you everything that you need to know to get up and going with your DJI Mavic from the day you buy it all the way to when you're producing cinematic video we're gonna jump right in and give you those tips right now. So go ahead, if you are looking for a specific topic, you can jump to them right here. Here's all the minutes where those are located. Let's jump right in. Number one, the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to think about is, are you gonna be flying recreationally or are you gonna be flying commercially? If you're gonna be flying recreationally, then there's really nothing you need to do. As of this June, or maybe May, it's irrelevant. There was a new law that was passed that said that if you're flying recreationally, you don't have to do anything. You no longer have to register your drone. That said, you need to always stay up on the laws because they are constantly changing. As you can see, that just happened here a couple months ago, less than a month ago, a couple weeks ago, something like that. Make sure you're doing your research ahead of time. If you know where you're gonna be flying, make sure you read up on that location and you're staying up to date on what they say about flying. You know, People are getting in trouble for flying in national parks, for flying overhead in cities. Guys like Casey Neistat are now getting cracked down on by the FAA for flying in places they shouldn't. So make sure you're not one of those people. Which takes me to the second part of my first point, which is if you're gonna be flying commercially, then you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and get your part 107 certification. Now this is gonna allow you to sell your footage in any form or fashion. You're never gonna to have to worry about the FAA being on you. It's also gonna be a really good educational tool for you to get to know all the regulations around flying a drone. It's just gonna keep you a lot safer in the long run. Point number two, when you go ahead and buy your drone, go ahead and get the Fly More combo. It's coming with two extra batteries and even more importantly, a charging hub. These batteries only lasting about 20 minutes before you need to bring them back and reload. So go ahead and get this. It's gonna have that hub where you can have extra batteries charging and you're never gonna to have to wait for a new battery to be charged because you constantly have them cycling in and out. It also comes with a fancy little carrying purse. That's not a purse, it's a satchel. It also comes with a fancy little carrying satchel. All in all, it's a fantastic deal, and quite frankly, if you don't have the extra batteries, you're gonna find that your fly times are just way too short, you're not really gonna be able to get much footage, so go ahead and get the Fly More combo. Number three, before you go flying, you need to download an app called Drone Buddy. Now, Drone Buddy has all the information that you need to understand before you go flying. So first off, this includes no-fly zones, some military bases, proximity to airports. It's not perfect, doesn't have everything, but it is going to give you a very rough idea to make sure you're not flying in areas that you overtly should not be flying in. This app is also great for communicating environmental conditions, which leads into my fourth point, which is you need to at least have a rudimentary understanding of the planetary KP index. What the KP index is, is a measure of storm activity from the sun that's going to have a magnetic interference effect on the Earth. Now, while this might not seem like a big deal, there actually is a potential for some magnetic interference with the compass on your drone if the sun's really going crazy up there. So if you jump into Drone Buddy and see that the KP index is sitting somewhere above a four, just at least be aware that there is a chance that you could see some magnetic interference with the compass of your drone. Point number five. If you're planning on shooting video and not just doing photo, you're probably gonna wanna pick up some neutral density filters. Well, let's say it's an incredibly bright day outside and you need to go out and shoot. Well, your camera has ideal settings that it should be shooting on, and a lot of times the light outside is just way too intense for that. So neutral density filters are essentially sunglasses that you put on the camera of your drone, and it cuts out a lot of that light before it even gets to the camera, allowing you to shoot at the optimal camera settings. The beauty of neutral density filters is that they cut out a lot of that excess light, but they will not affect the color of your footage. So one of the packs of filters that I recommend and that I use every single time I fly is by a group called Polar Pro, and they have a series that they call the Vivid series. This includes ND4, ND8, and ND16. I'm gonna flash some footage right now of what it looks like to shoot with all of those. So you can see that when the camera is shooting and there's no filter on it, it's just far too bright. When we bump that up to an ND4, it starts helping a little bit. You can recover some of the colors, especially the buildings, but the sky is completely blown out. Moving on to ND8, the sky is really vivid. It's blue, it looks great, you're retaining all that detail, and by the time we get to ND16, it's a little bit darker than you'd hope it would be, but it still looks great, very usable footage. 
Another reason I really recommend the Polar Pros is because they're so light and so precise and designed really well for the camera of the Mavic, you can actually boot up and turn on and off your device, leaving that filter on. So when you're out there, you're running, you're gunning, you're sticking that drone in your bag and you're moving to a next location, taking those filters on and off can really be a hassle. So getting one on that fits the conditions and just leaving it on is really, really helpful. Point six, Consider buying a bigger SD card for your camera than the one that comes with it. So it comes with a 16 gig, but if you're shooting in 4K, which you should, it's not big enough. So go ahead and get a bigger memory card. I recommend a 64 gig. Point number seven, and this one should seem really obvious, but people do this and it's crazy. Do not shoot with the camera cover on. So that globe that comes on the front, while it seems like a really great protector for the gimbal and for the camera, do not shoot with that on. You're gonna get all sorts of weird reflections. It's gonna distort your film a little bit don't shoot with it on, take it off. It was never made to be flown with that on. That's just for transport, for you to stick it in your bag and ensure that the camera's not getting all bent up and scratched up. Don't fly with it on. Point number eight, ideal cinematic camera settings. Here they are. I found a lot of people advertising different settings, some that are good, some that are bad. I've tried a whole bunch of them, but here they are. I'm gonna flash them up here on the screen so that you can check them out and I'm gonna talk about them and go through them a little bit. First off, I always shoot in D-Log. D-Log had some issues early on, but with recent updates, it's really doing a fantastic job of capturing a ton of detail and allowing you to retain that when you take it into post-production. Now for my color settings, I am shooting in plus one, negative one, negative one. And there's gonna be some debate here, but basically plus one's gonna be your sharpness. You're gonna want to be at either zero or plus one. I never recommend going below zero. Basically, the software of the DJI Mavic does some really weird things when you lower that sharpness below zero, where you start seeing some artifacts that are blurry in only certain areas of the footage. It really doesn't look good. Just keep it at zero or plus one, you're gonna be far happier. Zero if you want it to be a little bit less sharp, plus one if you want it to resemble something more like the Phantom 4, and then negative one, negative one, this is gonna be your saturation, your color. These are gonna be down one step, mainly because D-Log already takes a lot of that out. So by only lowering those by negative one, you're really already taking out a lot of color and you don't need to drop it that much lower. Those are my color settings. Take them or leave them. I'm using the MP4 format, 4K at 30 frames per second. You have the ability to conform that down to 24 frames per second for a really cinematic look with that nice 20% slowdown. It looks really great. Shutter speed, you're gonna want this to be at 60. You're always going to want to double your frame rate, so 30 frames per second, 160 is shutter speed. My EV meter, I'm trying to keep as close to zero as possible, and I'm trying to keep my ISO right around 100 or 200, and that allows you to keep a lot of the graininess in your footage out. White balance, I'm keeping right at about 7,000 Kelvin, plus or minus maybe 200. This allows me to adjust for the conditions, and it looks wonderful, it's easy to color grade, looks great on a sunny day. Another thing I always make sure I have turned on is the overexposure alert, so you get those zebras to let you know where overexposure is in your footage. Now, of all the channels that I've watched to find this information, big shout out to Matt, who is Matt Johnson. He's also a friend of the channel. He does phenomenal work. Here's a link for his videos and for his channel. Go check him out. He's producing really great cinematic work, so big shout out to Matt for giving us some of the best video settings that I've seen thus far. Point number nine, gimbal settings. So we've got our camera set up, now let's get our gimbal set up. First thing you're gonna wanna do is jump into your settings and you're gonna want to adjust your yaw down from 0.25 to 0.2. Your yaw is basically your rotation around the Y axis, so your drone turning. And currently the way it comes right out of the box, it is very twitchy. So by lowering this from 0.25 to 0.2, you're getting a little bit slower turn, looks a little bit more cinematic and is altogether just gonna give you a much smoother shot when you're turning while filming. Now when you start adjusting that gimbal and rotating up and down, man, that thing is just, it is flying, man. It's got hard stops, so we're gonna take that out. We want that to smooth down substantially. So what we're gonna do is lower our gimbal smooth track to between 20 and 30. I believe mine is set at right at about 20 or 23. What you're gonna wanna do is adjust your gimbal speed to between 20 and 30. What all of these are gonna do when you bring them all together is it's gonna get your gimbal moving a little bit slower and then it's gonna have a ramp up and a ramp down at the beginning of that motion. So instead of having a hard stop, hard stop, hard stop, it's going to start and then stop, start and then fade into the stop. This gives you a much, much smoother action. You're gonna have to practice with it a little bit because you have to let your finger off a little bit before when you want it to actually stop, but it's gonna look so much better. Your film's gonna look so much smoother and a whole heck of a lot more cinematic. The last couple things that I recommend is turning on your 30 degrees up switch. What this is gonna do is allow you to actually tilt that camera 30 degrees 
above the horizontal and film what's above you. And the last thing that I would highly recommend making sure you turn on is the gimbal pan synchronous follow. What this is gonna do is when you're turning the drone, it's actually going to use the motion of the gimbal to help smooth that out as well. So overall, it's doing everything it can to get your footage looking as good as it possibly can, as smooth as it possibly can. Point number 10, the last thing we're gonna talk about is go ahead and start getting comfortable with color grading. Understand what it is, understand what LUTs are, also known as lookup tables. These are really, really easy tools that allow you to take that D-log footage and make it look beautiful in a really short period of time. You don't have to do all that much work, but it's gonna have so much more detail. It's gonna be richer. It won't be that hyper-saturated auto mode. It just looks so much better. So learn how to use them in either Final Cut or Premiere, whichever one you're using. There are a lot of people out there explaining what they are, how they work. Peter McKinnon is probably one of my favorites. He produces some of his own lookup tables, his own LUTs, and he also shows you how to use them, what they are, how to grade with them. I'm going to go ahead and provide a link to that in the description below, and you can also see some of my footage, the before and after, of what it looked like when it came in, and then after it was graded. So that's it guys, those are my tips on what you should be doing from the day you buy your drone to the day you're shooting cinematic video and everything in between. I really hope this was helpful. I'll tell you, I had a ton of fun shooting this video. So go ahead and please hit that thumbs up if you found this helpful, if you agree with these settings. If you don't, maybe drop something in the comments. Let me know what you think and maybe even consider hitting that big ol' subscribe button. I really would appreciate it if you would. I'm gonna be producing a ton more videos. If you have ideas for other videos too, go ahead and drop those in the comments. It'll give me some ideas of what else I can produce that you will find helpful. So thank you so much for watching, guys. I will catch you in the next video. Cheers.